We're all built with a, the first line, seriously. We're all built with a moral compass. It tells us what's important, who we are, what decisions are right for us, what's good, what's bad. But what happens when that compass breaks? It jumps around the dial trying to find a good spot to land, never satisfied with your final decision. In this video, we will go over the characteristics of moral scrupulosity to see if you can relate and go over three ways we are going to fight it. Thanks as always to No CD for sponsoring this video. No CD offers affordable, effective, convenient therapy available to those in the US and outside of the US. To find more about No OCD, their therapy plans, and if they currently take your insurance, head over to www.treatmyocd.com. If you're obsessing about your ethics, it might not be such a good thing after all. I mean, hear me out. Your ethics and morals matter. It's when you have those moral dilemmas throughout the day. That's where the problem lies. Questioning and obsessing about your decisions, your ethics, if you're doing things morally right. You may have heard of the term scrupulosity. Usually when people talk about this, it's with religious obsessions. But there are some individuals, actually, a lot of individuals who struggle with scrupulosity. And it has nothing to do with religion. Simply put, they just want to make sure they are a good person. Moral scrupulosity is an obsessive concern about this very thing. Your life might depend on it. You value yourself as a very black and white person. This is a good decision. This is a bad decision. This can be determined before the decision is even made. Putting value on something that hasn't even happened yet. Once the person has made this final decision, their brain might say, you know what, bro? Are you sure about that? Here is a checklist of how moral scrupulosity shows itself. An excessive concern with being 100% honest at all times. Overthinking about the possibility of getting in trouble or breaking the rules. Concern and ruminating about past experiences. Those things you really can't change and you wonder if they were immoral or not. Researching if others would make this same decision that you did. Getting feedback, getting ideas. Is this something that you would do? Does it make them a good person or a bad person? Concerns that others would reject you if they really knew who you were or if they knew those decisions that you would make. Obsessing about an actual moral mistake that you made then you feel the need to punish yourself because of this thing. Concerned that you've made this mistake because the brain popped it, that idea into your head and it said, you better replay these moments. You need to be sure that you were honest and that you did not make a mistake and that you're a good person. Worried that you may be disloyal to your partner or your spouse, or you caused someone else to be immoral. Maybe it's a glance at somebody. I glanced at him. And my brain says, oh man, you just committed adultery. They looked back at you, maybe you just ruined their marriage. Yes, the brain can come up with those conclusions pretty quick. All decisions are over-evaluated for their ethics and their morals. Often, other themes of OCD love to join the party. It could be contamination. I touched this thing that someone else touched, and if I get them sick, it's wrong. It was wrong of me. I can't believe I did that morally. I'm a bad person. Checking behaviors. I didn't check all the doors multiple times and if something happens, uh, it's morally wrong. I'm risking my family. I didn't make the right choice. I'm a bad person. Accidentally causing harm means I'm a bad person. I tripped my child. I was careless. It determines who I am as a person. I need to make sure I don't do something like that ever again. But you get the picture. This is all mingled with anxiety and fear. It may not be worth the risk of being a bad person. The compulsions that happen show like this. Lots of reassurance asking, am I a good person? Um, are you sure, would you make this kind of decision? They may be mentally reviewing the day, certain behaviors to make sure that this decision they made was right 
they're asking over and over and over again, not really accepting the answer that was first given. Rumination is a big, big, big one. I'm just thinking and evaluating. No big deal, right? I'm fixing everything in my brain. I, I'm going to keep thinking about it, come up with that really good answer until I'm satisfied. And when I feel satisfied, I'm going to think about it again because my brain's going to say, are you sure about that? Now that you know what moral scrupulosity actually looks like, let's dive into those three ways we are going to fight this thing. Number one, subscribe to this channel. It will power you up. I'm just kidding. That's not number one, but it'd be helpful if you did. Okay, here's really number one. Use exposure and response prevention. Many believe that they must go against their morals or their values when doing this type of treatment, but it is so untrue. In this treatment, your whole goal is to be uncertain. This means you're not problem solving in your brain. This means you're actually living your life, making decisions really quickly. Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. You're choosing to stick with what you know and leave the rest uncertain. For instance, many may think that if they have the fear of lying or being deceitful, that their exposure must be to lie and be deceitful. But no, if this is not part of your value system, it's actually not something a therapist or specialist would have you do. Instead, we focus on those things that you think happened those things that make you feel like you've lied and maybe been deceitful. It's possible that individuals are playing games like two truths and a lie. Wait, is that lying? It's a game. We'll see. It's going to make you feel like something is wrong, but you're not actually breaking your moral or value system because you're playing a game, but your brain's not going to say that. What we end up finding out through this whole thing is that what actually happened and what the brain is saying what happened are two different things. So we are exposing to that uncertainty, not knowing if you're a good person, not knowing if you're a bad person. We are not going to logic our way out of this thing. We're not going to make sure that you didn't tell a lie. We are letting life happen as it is. So when the brain says, are you completely honest with your boss? My job is to not fall into the trap of ruminating and I don't know. He said, did you get here at seven? And I actually got here at 701. I'm not sure. I mean, I said, yes. I'm not sure if I was lying, if I was deceitful. Our job is to say, I don't know. Maybe I was deceitful. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe 701 is deceitful. Maybe it's not, but I did what I did. I said what I did. That's how life goes. I am no longer ruminating this thing. It is what it is. And when the brain says you're a bad person, that's not one of those things that I say, maybe, maybe not to. I actually am just like, okay, bro. I've acknowledged the thought. Cool, bro. Thanks for the thought. Hey, there you are again. I acknowledge a thought, but I'm not ruminating with it. I'm not engaging with it. Actually, my job is to stay uncertain. If it says 701 is dishonest, my job is to respond differently to this, which brings us to number two, respond differently. Anytime the brain comes up with an idea, that is mixed with anxiety, you have that urge to fix it, we are choosing to respond differently to this. You are almost committing to not find the answer. So I might say, yeah, man, totally, probably did. Well, what did you think is going to happen to this? I almost imagine the brain just like exploding. It's like, what the heck are you saying? I just told you that you're in danger and you're not doing anything about it. You're not going to fix it. What's going on here? What ends up happening is it takes all the value away from this thing. It doesn't turn you into a liar. It doesn't turn you into a deceitful person. It takes value away from these things that you never had to question before. It starts teaching your brain to move forward, to not fall for any threats that you cannot physically see right in front of you. Responding differently means that you are no longer doing the compulsions. You might spend some time writing down what those compulsions actually are. Compulsions are those things that you're doing to make sure that you're a good person, to make sure you didn't lie, to make sure you would never hurt somebody, to make sure that you are a good person at all times with your thoughts, with what you're saying, feelings, all of that. People tend to be scared if they no longer put control in this area because they're like, I'm going to go off the rails. I'm going to be a, one of those people that just like doesn't care about the world anymore. This doesn't happen. You are you. 
we are just simply not responding to the OCD and anxiety anymore. Allowing your body and your brain to just do its thing when it comes to your values and your morals. Number three, acceptance. It's important when you are choosing to do treatment that you have this mindset of acceptance. Acceptance means that you are allowing your thoughts to be. You're choosing to not do anything with them. You accept that you're going to be moving forward in life regardless of the doubting and the noise in your head. You're not gonna make sense of it and problem solve if you're a good person or if you're not. Now that is one of the toughest points, choosing to not figure this out. And people might say, Nate, you're crazy. How am I supposed to live my whole life not knowing if I'm a good person or not? But what I find is that when people move past these OCD themes, it's not like it's not even a question. You know yourself. You, you don't even have to question if you're a good person or a bad person. Like how often do we realistically need to think about this in our life? We live life. You follow your values and your morals. When there is anxiety that pops up out of nowhere and it makes you question something, especially if it's multiple times a day, it's a false alarm. We have to treat it as a false alarm because where's the danger? Nothing's happened. Why did you not have to do this in the past? Why is it all of a sudden so important? That's how we know this is OCD related and it's our job to retrain the brain, to say, false alarm, not, not dealing with this right now. People might say, I can't live with myself not knowing if I'm a good person. But here's the thing, that's not your job. Your job is to be you, whatever you is. The doubts that come in can often be answered with a maybe, maybe not, or okay, uh-huh, thank you, awesome, great, I love this thought, wonderful, I'm gonna say 701 tomorrow too. So do you excessively question if you're making the right decisions or not? If you're a good person? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.